My guest today's hit song, Hills and Valleys, has hit 5.5 million views on YouTube and is the third most streamed and most downloaded song in Christian music. He is currently on tour with the great Lionel Richie and Mariah Carey. Welcome, Torn Wells. Glad to be here. I'm How so are excited you? to have you here. Yeah. I want to know what it's like being on tour with Lionel <laughs> Richie and Mariah Carey. It is unlike any other tour I've been on. It's really? been amazing. Yeah, it's been amazing. Um, Lionel has been very warm, very kind, mm. and uh, the crowds he brings out are great. They're enjoying my set. Yeah. Um, and so it's been fun. We're take, soaking it up. Take us back to that day when you got the phone call. Yeah. What was that well, like? you know, it was a few phone calls okay. because the first the first correspondence I received was an email. Ah. And it was just arenas and dates. Okay. And my manager didn't put a subject line. He just asked uh, are you available? So he didn't days. tell you that Lionel no. Richie was involved? No. Oh. And I'm reading through there and I'm seeing like Madison Square Garden, yeah. Hollywood Bowl in LA and I'm like Okay, um, I'm available. I can guarantee my schedule will be clear, but would you like to tell me who this is with? Right. And he calls me back and he's like, are you sitting down right now? And uh, I, I've been in the industry long enough to be like, there's nothing you're gonna tell me that's gonna require me <laughs> to actually sit down. So um, then he's like, there is a very good chance you're gonna be on tour with Lionel Richie. And, and you were like, I should get it. And seat. then I was like, okay, where's, <laughs> where's the chair? Uh, so yeah, and then from there, uh, a couple weeks later, I got a phone call confirming that everything had gone through and it was happening. And that's when my four-year-old son came downstairs and was like, Dad, why are you so happy? <laughs> it's like, is Dad not always happy? I had this like parenting crisis <laughs> yes, in the middle of yes. my... Yeah, but no, it's it's been great and what an opportunity to share hope mm. and love and truth with people. It's been It's been really cool. Now, have you been surprised at the success of Hills and Valleys? Like, 5.5 million views, yeah. third best Christian song of all time. Like, this is huge. Yeah, it is huge. Like, I try, to, I try to not be surprised because I tell everyone else that God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Um, and then when it comes to me, it's like, well, you know, maybe right. if it happened, you know. And I don't even know to think these things or dream these things. And uh, really, it's always cool to see a song on whatever level it is mm. connecting with people. And this song is connecting with people. And uh, I'm blessed that God breathed it through me. Mm. It's a really cool opportunity. And you've been in, as you said, you've been in the industry for a while. We've known you from Royal Taylor and yeah. you decided to step out on your own and yeah. do this solo thing. Is this kind of confirmation that, yeah, like God has a whole other yeah, path for plan. you now. He's got a plan. Now, my, my struggle a lot of times is not with the path necessarily, it's with the pace. Uh, I like things to move along quickly and let's get this done. Yeah. And, you know, I got my little goals and everything. But uh, really, I've, I've learned that I have to trust, and I'm learning that I have to trust God with both the path and the pace. Mm. Um, because if I try and rush through seasons and assignments, then I'm gonna end up with ruin. But mm -hmm. if I can do everything from a place of rest mm. and not trying to perform or get people to like me, um, you know, I'm gonna end up with, with a greater reward. And you appreciate it more because Absolutely. you get to sit in that rest and actually observe and take in what you're yes. experiencing. And you get none of the credit. Yeah. So no big head, yeah. no ego. It's like this would not be happening yeah. without God. So it's cool. Your life has kind of gone through some hills and valleys. Yeah. Your parents divorced at, an early, at a young age. Yep. Uh, what was that like for you as you went through that transition and finding your faith in God and all of those things? Yeah, well, when you're four or five years old and your parents split, you don't really know how to process it. So I think the processing actually happens later in life. Mm -hmm. So I had been processing that the last few years prior to where I'm at now and just kind of sorting all that out, getting married myself, having kids myself. You start looking back at some of the fractures of your past. And um, you know, what I'm, what I'm grateful for is how God turned that situation around. And I know that I am one of many that come from a broken home, mm -hmm. but the cool thing about God is he makes broken things beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, um, all my parents now are serving God and mm -hmm. um, great relationships and I have wonderful brothers and sisters, you know, because of that. And God has really used it 
for me to connect with other people that have walked through a similar mm -hmm. thing and to know that I can be married for 50 years, 60 years, you know, yeah. and um, that that's possible. So, you know, I'm grateful for my parents. They're amazing people. And I actually get to see them in a couple of days in Chicago. Cool. They're coming out to the show. So they must be very proud. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I can't wait to introduce them to Lionel. Oh my god. Because when I introduced Lionel gonna, to my in-laws. Like, yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When like, I introduced them to my in-laws, uh, Lionel was like, now this is the moment when you tell them I told you so. <laughs> Cause I know you went through a lot to get here. Yeah. So yeah. Now there was one pastor that really helped you through that time yeah. as well. And also that's where you found your talent, you found your yeah. gifting. Take us through that and yeah. just and finding your your passion for God. My student pastor was also my uncle. Oh. And he came to our church when I was 13. Okay. And I had to do everything short of showing him my birth certificate to prove that I was old enough to be in the youth group because I was about 2 foot 4. <laughs> and uh we had a little voice, little pipsqueak voice. And I'm like, I'm in the youth group, I'm 13. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that was a really cool relationship mm -hmm. that God brought into my life. Because one day I was 16 and he said, I know you sing and stuff and I want you to lead worship, but you need to learn how to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, my dad had keyboards and okay. all that stuff at the house. So I started trying to learn keys and I was just not learning very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I learned Here I Am to Worship. Okay. We yeah. played Here I Am to Worship for like six months. And then I'm like, I mastered gotta, it. Yes, I gotta learn more songs. Yeah. But I couldn't learn them as fast as I could just write them. Because you can write your own songs and then no one knows if you're messing up. Right, right. Um, and then, so I started doing that and that's how I kind of discovered songwriting. Mm. Fell in love with that. And uh, he created opportunities for me to just preach and lead worship and write songs. And my church was small enough to where I could have the opportunities to do that a lot. And I attribute a lot of that to where I am now. And you're pastoring, you pastor as well? I'm one of the pastors on staff, okay. yeah. Wow. Yep, in Houston, Texas. So just balancing all of these things, juggling all of these different yeah, things. Yeah, it's tough. And uh, it's important to have like the right people around you, mm. you know, because uh, there's just so many people that make what I do happen. Mm -hmm. And um, whether it's in the local church or out here on the road, and uh, I may be a solo artist, but I'm definitely not alone. Mm. And your song, Hills and Valleys, came from a sermon that you had also preached as well. And yeah. So take us back to where that song came from and where that was birthed out of. Because I'm assuming being a pastor, you're meeting a lot of people that are going through hills and valleys yeah, in yeah, their lives. Yeah, for sure. And you're walking through it with them. Yeah. That's the cool thing about staying connected to the local churches. When they hurt, you hurt. When they celebrate, you celebrate. And um, I was scrolling through Twitter. This was a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, pastor tweeted, on the mountaintops of life, learn to bow low. And in mm. the valleys, learn to stand tall. And I just saved that. And then like a year later, I was just playing piano and singing. And that quote came to mind. Mm -hmm. And I just started singing that, um, the hook. And uh, it just all flowed very naturally. Then I took it to some friends in Nashville, Chuck Butler and Jonathan Smith. Um, Jonathan Smith was a part of a huge song called Chain Breaker oh. um, by my label mate, Zach Williams. And uh, so we, we finished that song together. And after it was released and it came out, I thought, I want to share more of the depth in the heart of mm -hmm. this. So it was my turn to preach one Sunday, and I thought, I'm, I'm going to preach Hills and Valleys. And I just really talk about how to respond, because I've heard messages all my life about how God is the God of the hills, mm -hmm. and he's the God of the valleys. Praise God, that's wonderful. But what is my posture, what's my response mm -hmm. when I find myself in the middle of success? Mm -hmm. When I find myself in the middle of struggle, how do I respond? And uh, so I just break down humility and um, how beautiful things grow in dark places mm -hmm. and how Jesus isn't just the bright and morning star yeah. set in a lofty place. He's the lily of the valley so he can grow in, in what we feel like is a devastating place. And it's connecting with people. Yeah. So. We have 30 seconds, but I want you to minister to somebody who might be watching going through a hill or a valley. What would you say to them today? Yeah, I would say that no matter what you're walking through, um, Jesus is with you. 
no matter where you stand, you're standing in God's love. You're not out of reach. Um, and there is nowhere that he has not been. Uh, God is faithful. He is for you. And there is something that God is doing in the valley of your life that is going to produce an inner strength for when you ascend to the mountaintops. And had you not walked through the valley you're in right now, you wouldn't make it on the mountaintop. So praise him in the valley and praise him on the mountains. Thank you so much, Torin. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And I hope what Torin said to you really resonated. Our prayer lines are available 24-7. Amazing prayer partners that would love to pray with you. Again, journey with you, as, as Torin said. Maybe you are going through that valley and you need somebody to join with you and agree that there is a mountaintop at the other end, but maybe you have to learn a few things. And so please do uh, call our prayer lines. They're at the bottom of your screen, 1-866-273-4444. Jesus is there for you today. Stay with us. We'll be right back.